Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today I'm going to do a specially requested video in talking about some of the supplies that I feel like I can't live without in paper crafting. So there will be a lot of caveats, a lot of addendums, a lot of commentary going into this video. If paper crafting isn't your forte, let me know down below what you would like my opinion on as far as supplies for other crafts that you know I might do. Um, there are going to be probably a lot of not so surprising things on here. If you've watched my channel or have even started getting into paper crafting, there will be some tips and tricks along the way, things that I've learned and things that I have discovered. So first off, I would like to discuss how I got into paper crafting. So this was the most convoluted way to possibly ever and the most backwards way to possibly ever get into paper crafting at all. And by paper crafting, I mean more than mod podging something every now and again. So my husband builds models on occasion and sometimes he needs to cut frisket for stenciling or um, sometimes he needs a, a low tack vinyl to create a stencil on a curved edge and stuff. And he started looking into cutting machines and then realized things like the Cricut and the Silhouette might benefit me as a crafter, but I was not a paper crafter. I was strictly fiber crafting. Occasionally I might do like some little painted ornaments or something, but really all in all, I have been a fiber crafter our entire marriage. So he got me this Cricut for Christmas. And at first we thought like the number one thing I was going to do, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do some like uh, heat transfer vinyl kind of things on like some bags or, you know, do decals for my, my drink cups. Cause I, if you've been with me for a while, you know, I always have my 32 ounce water cup unless I've got like today, <laughs> it's all coffee. If you can't tell by the light, if you've been here before, as we've got the bright, bright light coming in direct, uh, it is first thing in the morning. So I don't have water yet. But he was thinking like, you know, I might want to do decals, do some little decoration things like on the refrigerator or some temporary decals on like a wall or something. So he thought like I might be able to get use out of it. So he got me a Cricut Explore Air 2 for Christmas one year. And I started with vinyl crafting and had a blast with it. And I've shared certain things like my um, Troy and Carrie Penny flower box thing that I made and stuff like that. Really, I wanted the vinyl decal that had our names, but, or the, the Penny family is what it is. Anyway, like I wanted to make that project and then started doing the paper and I purchased a multi-pink paper pack, 65 gram paper pack from Michaels just to do these rolled things and then realized I actually kind of enjoyed the fidgety paper crafts. I hate cutting fabric, but love sewing. I like cutting paper, but kind of hate embellishing. It's really funny. So that directly, he was thinking vinyl crafting, stuff like that. You know, I might want to make some ornaments to sell on like Facebook marketplace or something, you know, just kind of like that kind of thing. And then next thing he knew, I was going to Michael's buying the multicolor packs of cardstock and making like embellishments, you know, sugar skulls, or I did some really fancy cut Christmas cards for him to hand out around the office one year. I started doing print and cut on paper. I did a boo sign for Halloween. Like I really got into paper crafting and a lot of that I haven't been able to share here on the channel because I haven't had time to do much since I started my channel other than card making. Well, one thing led to another and then I started card making and I really don't use my Cricut that much to be honest. I do use it to cut out some like sentiments when I don't have time to do a whole bunch of stamp sentiments, but really like paper crafting is something I'm very new to. So, and I started into it very backwards. I would not recommend going out and buying a digital cutter by any stretch of the imagination unless you have other needs for a digital cutter. If there are, if you're, if you have like four different things, kinds of things you want to be able to do and a digital cutter is really what you need for it. Great. That's fine. But don't buy one thinking you're going to use it for paper crafting. Wait until you see what your need is on stuff like that. So that's tip number one, hold off on die cutting and the digital cutters that like things like the Sissix, the cuddle bug, things like, like hold off on those purchases until you know, you're going to use them. Once you know, you're going to use them 
do your research to pick the one that's going to work the best for you. And that's something, you know, I, because it was a gift, I did not have the opportunity to really research what I was going to use or need. And immediately my needs and use desire did change. So hold off on those more expensive purchases. But you asked for what I think I can't live without. So we're going to start off pretty easy and talk about some adhesives that I reach for constantly. First off, and there, there will be links for a lot of these things um, as an, uh, under Amazon affiliate links. They, it costs you absolutely nothing, but if you purchase through my links, you do help me get a couple extra dollars along the way, maybe. Um, don't have to. I mean, I understand. You, the, it's, it's one of those, you might not be ready, kind of like, don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. But it does kind of help me out a little bit. First off is my ATG gun. This is the Scott's Advanced Tape Glider. Now, this thing looks terrifying. Refilling it looks absolutely terrifying. Watch May May made its tutorial on how to fill it. But once you understand, when you wheel it off, you want your adhesive here. You can backwind it fairly easily to figure out where everything goes. It is big. It does take some getting used to to line up your adhesive tape exactly where you want it. But once you have the hang of this, this is my go-to adhesive for everything. And here I have tape from Tape Jungle. I will also list a smaller package, if I can find it on Amazon, that's about this size. I think it's 25 rolls of the tape. If you're doing scrapbooking and need it to be acid-free for sure by the Scott brand. Um, Michael sometimes has it on sale. Joanne sometimes has it on sale, 50% off. Look for those sales and purchase the acid-free stuff if you're going to be scrapbooking with this. If you're just making cards and doodads, the Tape Jungle unspecified is perfectly fine. Um, I love this thing. I, I If you watched my 2021 goals and review, you know, the paper crafting empties, you know, I do count my ATG empties every single quarter, not because I'm trying to use them up, but because I'm curious as to how much I actually used. I think I had like 12 or 13 empty rolls for quarter four last year. I already have two in my empties bin for this year. So, 100% this is my go-to. I know there are smaller tape runners out there. My problem with those is many of them are not refillable. Many of them create a lot of plastic waste even if they are. Their cartridges will be hard plastic cartridges that many recycling centers will not recycle. This one, you have a ring, a little plastic ring. Now that I can't get it back open again. That little plastic ring is your only plastic waste. Everything else can be put in paper recycling or can be thrown in the trash can easily without too much hair rending versus big plastic cartridges. Also, the refills for this, especially if you use like the Tape Jungle or the one I have listed as the Amazon affiliate link. These are incredibly inexpensive compared to the other refills. Like I've said, I've used the Tombow Mono before. Be beautiful. I love the Tombow ta tape runner. It's a great tape runner. It works fantastically, but it's very expensive to refill. It's, I think my old ones are 36 yards of tape, which or 36 feet of tape, which really isn't that much. Um, I don't have to refill this often because that's a lot of tape per roll. So yeah. ATG gun. I should have brought a box to set aside everything as I talk about it. Next on the dry adhesive front, I do really like the scrapbook.com dry adhesives. This is a much stronger hold, stronger bond thing. Um, 
Unfortunately, I have a bunch of stuff stacked on top of my journals for 2021 and 2022, but this is what I use to adhere the paper onto my journals when I do my uh, crafting journals or my uh, prayer journals, things like that. This is what I cover those composition notebooks in. And then, well, I actually put it on the back of the paper and then like, but anyway. This is what I use to do those outside, inside covers to ensure that I'm getting a really, really, really tight hold, a very firm hold that isn't going to start loosening with time. The ATG is great, but it's just not strong enough to hold on to a journal you're going to be using quite a bit. Your paper will start to fall away from the edge. This does also thicken up some of the lighter weight papers out there. There are all kinds of different acid-free versions of these dry adhesives that are stronger hold, thicker based, thicker bodied. If you sew, it's kind of like a iron-on interfacing, except you don't have to iron it on. Absolutely wonderful product. I have it in the like four, a quarter of an inch, one inch, giant roll, medium. I think there's like a two inch over there. I use quite a bit of this, but... You don't have to use the scrapbook.com version. There are other versions. This is just what I happen to have on my desk where I could at least tell you where I bought it because I do have some white stuff that I'm not sure where I got it from. Liquid glue is up next. So if you guys have heard me talk about paper crafting, you know that I am personally a huge fan of art glitter glue. This is my go-to adhesive while paper crafting that is a wet adhesive. I do, as a general rule, think especially if you're going to be making a lot of cards or trying to do a lot of things, you need a dry adhesive as well as a wet adhesive. They do do different things and they do do different things differently. However, especially as I'm filming this in January, a lot of places are not going to ship art glitter glue to you because it does not do well in extreme heat or extreme cold. If this product gets frozen at all, it gets all like cottage cheesy and gross and you can't use it. So, as an alternative, I'm going to mention a product I have never used. I do own it, but this is uh, Barely Arts Glue. A lot of people swear by this. I have the um, two ounce or four ounce bottle here, as well as the 11 ounce refill, hence Barely Arts Glue. Um, a lot of paper crafters use this. I see a lot of card makers using this. Uh, I did listen to May May Made It talking about these. These can get frozen even though they don't recommend it. They do still work. They work in the southern heat. They work in humidity. It is a little bit, uh, a little art glitter glue goes a very long way. Apparently with this, according to May May, she says even less of this goes even further. <laughs> So use a very, very light hand with this glue and you will succeed. The little box that is the starter pack here does come with different tips. You have an ultra fine tip, a fine tip, and then a storage tip that you can put into your glue. Like I have the fine tip on my art glitter glue there. And they come in a little test tube like this. And here is the cap that you would exchange that flat cap for. So your little starter pack, it's very inexpensive. I was very happy with the cost. I did purchase this a while back, so I can't tell you how much I paid for it. But I did buy it on Amazon. So as long as it's still on Amazon, I will have the link in the description box. I, I've heard quite a few people raving about this. I know they uh, when they first launched, they did a lot of reaching out to... Uh, people on social media, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, places like that to have them test out the product. I am seeing a lot of the people that I watch regularly and follow regularly, not just use it for the purpose of reviewing it, but continue to repurchase it. And I see it in their videos time after time after time. Some of these are people who I've seen using art glitter glue. Some of these are people who I had seen using like the Nuvo glue or the uh, tonic Tim Holtz glues. So to see them convert to using this more or less all the time, especially while filming, I would say this is a quality product based on what I have seen. However, I cannot give my guarantee on that one. But Art Glitter Glue, hands down, if you can get your hands on it when it's not freezing, I, that is my go-to liquid adhesive.
I have been using it for years. Love it. So I'm going to set these to the side now. I'm trying really hard to not have a product mountain here avalanche. All right. One more adhesive product. This is foam tape. Now, in particular, if you're making cards, you want a foam tape that is not so thick that it's going to jam up in the mail. But you want to be able to add dimension. Now, there are a couple of different ways to obtain foam tape. This is a giant roll of foam tape. I, this is a very cost effective. This is a product I purchased off of Amazon. I discovered this from watching Alicia over at Call Me Crafty Owl. This is the one she uses all the time. Um, I have used the Arteza. I've used the Scotch brand. I really, really like this one. It comes in a couple of different widths. So if you're wanting to do like little tiny sentiments and things like that, um, yeah, also, if you have something large you want to put down, I think I have a one inch, half inch, and quarter inch in the giant blue roll. Wonderful product. Sticks to almost everything. Perfectly fine. Hard adhesive. Be careful where you put it down if you don't want it to stay stuck. <laughs> but it's a great product. Foam tape adds a lot of dimension. Can really, if you're just starting out paper crafting, it can start to create a lot of polish in your finished objects and make them look more thought out, more planned, and more professional. So I highly recommend having a thinner foam tape just to bump things up and make things look interesting. Dimension and art is always a good thing. You see it in quilting. You see it in fashion design. You see it in how we create texture in fiber arts constantly. That's all that is, is it's a way to add dimension and a little bit of pop-up and texture to your projects. All right. Let's do the little things, and then I'm going to actually pause the video and clear some of this out of the way so we don't have a giant avalanche. Because like I said, we, we've got a big pile of products here. If you're going to start wanting to stamp like the inside of your cards and stuff, I do highly recommend just buying Memento Tuxedo Black. It's the best ink for just basically doing your basic, you know, thinking of you stamp. Uh, I do not have things like stamps, dies, or embossing folders and things like that on this list because until you know what you're going to make and until you know what your style is, I would recommend purchasing as you need for things like that. Don't just go out and buy, you know, 900 things at Tuesday morning. Purchase what you need. Be very intentional about it. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of stamping except for sentiment. So like my stamp collection is primarily sentiments with a couple of images to color. But most of those have been inherited from friends who were getting rid of stamps. Then I was like, sure, I'll take it. But most of my stamps are sentiments, things like Merry Christmas, Winter Wishes, Happy Holidays, Thinking of You, Happy Birthday. Some are inside sentiments where, you know, another year older, probably not any wiser. And then there's a coordinating stamp that will say thinking of you on your birthday or something. Primarily, I'm a sentiment stamper. I don't do a whole bunch of decorative stamping. Start out simple. Start out only purchasing what you need for the project you're doing. That way you can come back in six months to a year and be like, okay, what did I buy and what did I actually use? You don't want to purchase a whole bunch of things that you will never use and you're going to be sitting there going, oh, I just paid 20 bucks on something I've never touched. How much can I resell it for? Oh, I can only resell it for $5. Great. Don't put yourself in that position. As I said, with the yarn purchases, only bulk purchase, which you know for a fact, 100% hands down, you're going to use. If you're not going to use it, you're just wasting money and creating disappointment in your craft room. And that's not something you want to do. So I recommend just buying a Memento Tuxedo Black the first time you need to stamp some sentiments in something. The entire Memento line is a perfectly... Great line of inks to use if you need other colors. Black is just a standard go-to. This is a great black to use. Doesn't bleed on most papers. 
And when it comes to rubber versus polymer stamps, we'll get a little bit more into that here in a minute, but I do prefer the polymer stamps, the clear stamps versus rubber stamps, but that's a personal preference once again. Cutting tools. I always recommend having some form of an X-Acto blade that is very comfortable that you can control. It doesn't matter if you have a giant craft blade. It doesn't matter if you have a stick blade. If you use a finger blade, I have about 15 different X-Acto knives or cutting knives, craft knives in my crafting repertoire here. Some I use for paper crafting. Some I use for fabric crafting. Some I have for balsa wood. But a nice sharp blade in a comfortable configuration for you to use. I use this a lot for paper crafting because I can have very fine control using the finger blade. This is by Fiskars. I think I probably purchased this from sale at Joann's along with the Olaf blade that I have that is a retractable craft knife blade. But this is the one I use the most often while paper crafting. It just... Fine detail in control if you need to neaten something up, clean something up. Time after time, this is the one I reach for. A good quality pair of scissors. As with sewing, scissors are key. These are my short blade, Tim Holtz, Tom, or I, 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 on, there you go. These are the smooth blade. These are also the anti-stick blade. I also have the uh, serrated blade ones when I am cutting something a little bit thicker and need a little bit more purchase on what I'm cutting. This is, I, I will link these down below if I can find a link for them, but this brand specifically is just one that works for me. I like the fact that I can cut right or left-handed depending on what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I do have to grab things left-handed if I'm doing fine detail right. I'm partially ambidextrous, not completely, but a good pair of scissors. Paper crafting scissors are a lot cheaper. Good scissors that work for you tend to be a lot cheaper than sewing scissors. So good news. But you want scissors. I prefer anti-stick, something with a Teflon coated blade. So if you do get some sticky on there from cutting, you know, foam tape or you had to trim something up and there was a little adhesive left on it, you want something where you can easily take a wipe and wipe them clean and get that sticky off so it doesn't impede you being able to open and close them. I have some non-stick scissors from Fiskars that I really, really like. I have Cutter Bees for little fine detail things. There are lots of great scissors out there. These are just the ones that I happen to grab, but just something that's really comfortable in your hand. You're gonna want a short blade for fine detail and a longer blade. But like I said, it's much cheaper than buying things like sewing scissors, really good sewing scissors. So good news, bad news. But you do really need two pairs of scissors, a fine detail blade and the longer blade for just trimming things down. Reverse tweezers for picking up and manipulating very fine details. These are the We Are Memory Keeper ones, I think. Nope, EK Tools. Um... I'll probably pick these up at Tuesday morning since they're the name brand ones. There are all kinds of reverse tweezers out there. You want something with a fine tip. I find the curve does make it a lot easier to see. But if you're trying to manipulate things like your embellishments around, you want something like that. Teflon bone folder. Spend the money on it up front. Don't cheap out on the bone folder. This is not going to mark your paper when you're creasing paper. I fold all of my own card bases for the most part invaluable tool. It is also great for just burnishing things down. There are quite a few sets of these out there. I'm not sure what brand this one is, but if uh, in particularly the Arteza set is floating around out there on Amazon, I will link that because I've seen wonderful things about that and I have the little pokey one. But invest up front uh, in the Teflon bone folder, especially if you think you're going to be doing anything with non-white cardstock. Worth it Worth it if you're doing Mod Podge crafts. This comes clean really, really easily. If you need something to, uh, if you're doing vinyl crafting and want to really burnish something down, get into the fine details with it. This is not just for paper crafting. I use my Teflon <laughs> bone folder for a lot of different things, but I do highly recommend spending the money up front on the Teflon folder if you do any other type of just generic general crafting. 
Pokey tools. As with the reverse tweezers, these are just very, very useful things to have. I have the Tim Holtz or, uh, yeah, it's the tonic Tim Holtz pokey tool. This is a retractable uh, pokey tool. I originally got this for doing vinyl crafting with the Cricut and then realized once again, it's something else that I'm using more for paper than anything else. It's a highly useful tool to have in general. I do also have the We Are Memory Keepers tool and I use both sides of this quite a bit. We have the pokey side and then we have the flat side. So I do actually use this for picking things up, manipulating things around. And I use this flat edge quite a bit just to like if I'm doing rhinestones or like where I did the Christmas cards with the little pearl beads, tamping things down or trying to smush into like a certain area. Both of these are excellent tools. Both of these get the job done, but you need some sort of fine manipulation tool. And here I'm going to pause this video real quick and I will come back to discuss some of these larger, oh, before I put up tools. <clears throat> if once you've established, you want to continue making cards and you go on the hunt for some, this is not a purchase it up front. This is just a tip. When you go on the hunt for a corner rounder, because you want nice, pretty round corners on all your things, invest. This is a place to invest. I bought so many under $10 corner rounders over the years. Once again, I've only been paper crafting for like maybe five to six years. I started out with like the little Hobby Lobby one even just crafting that broke uh over time that just broke it didn't get dull it the the pressing mach mechanism and it broke i had the little ticker one it it's about this big that uh it got lost actually uh it didn't have time to break but it was starting to cut a little janky on the edges these are the crocodile we are memory keeper rounder and then i also have the stub and scallop corner punches I have had the corner rounder now for about three years and you know how many, I mean, I'm doing over 400 cards every year. This gets quite a bit of use. It is a little, um, but totally worth it. I was able to round all the corners in my craft journal, zero issues every year with this. If I do get a little bit of sticky down here where the blade is, I can very easily take a Q-tip with a little bit of water there and just wipe the sticky off of it. But many years worth of usage for whatever the cost is now, never have to replace it, constantly use it versus having to replace something every six to 12 months at 10 to $20 a pop. So I highly recommend upfront investing and particularly the corner rounder. Go ahead and invest in that once you need it. Don't just go out and buy it once you have need of this tool. Once you need a corner rounder, just go ahead and invest in it. Sometimes Joann's will have these on sale. Sometimes you find them at Michael's on sale. So if you've got time, wait for your sale, wait for a coupon, wait for somebody to, to do a big discount on We Are Memory Keepers products. But hands down, this is one of those places to just invest when you need it. Don't cheap out. Don't get the cheaper punches. Save yourself the frustration, the heartache, and the irritation when you're sitting there going, but my punch doesn't work. Why is my card stock getting torn up? Why did the handle break? I'm not that hard on these tools. These are tools I'm fairly easy on. I mean, I kid you not, I've probably spent $150 on corner rounders. And at the time I purchased mine, it was $30 for this one. And I was really mad I had spent over $100 when I could have just spent $30. So we're going to pause this. I'm going to tidy up my desk and we'll come in and talk about my last few things to discuss. See you in a minute. 